The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers, and I am here today with Katie Addis. Hey, Katie. Hi, Sarah. So if you are listening to this the day it drops into your feed, it is uh, the Monday after Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, also known as Cyber Monday. It is also not the day we normally drop episodes. So what we decided to do was drop three kind of shorter mini episodes in your feed today, and they are all gift guide episodes. So you should see them all actually now. Katie and I are going to talk for the next half hour or so about holiday gift ideas for babies through preschoolers up to about age five. And then you can keep right on listening because you should see two additional episodes with Megan and me talking about gifts for older kids and then gifts for teens and other adults in your life. So this is going to be really fun. I warned Katie that we're going to move fast because we've got a lot lot to get through. (laughs) We're going to cut the chit chat. It's going to be so fun, though. Gifts are totally my love language, receiving and giving. So not many people have the stamina to talk toys for a sustained amount of time. But Katie's ready for it. I'm ready. She's ready. Um, Yeah, so this is going to be fun. Um, And then check out the other two episodes in your feed for other gift guide ideas. And of course, we're going to be going quickly through a bunch of different ideas, and there will be lots of products mentioned that we have loved and used. And you can find all those linked at the show notes at themomhour.com. So we don't expect you to remember it all. Um, One thing I find, Katie, is that sometimes just hearing people brainstorm about gifts even gives me other ideas. Oh, totally. Even if you don't get like that perfect gift idea for your kids or your nieces and nephews by listening to us, it might jog something else. And I'm terrible. I always forget the good gifts. And then you hear somebody mention it and you're like, oh, yeah, that was a great gift. So that's kind of our goal for today. So not only inspiration, but motivation, too. Are you perusing the aisles of Toys R Us right now or shopping on Amazon? You know you're doing your Cyber Monday shopping right now. (laughs) We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash themomhour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash themomhour for a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. 
I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Okay, you ready to talk about gifts? I'm so ready. Okay. I also wanted to mention really quickly that when you guys visit the show notes and see all these wonderful links that we've prepared for you, um, a lot of those links, especially the Amazon ones, are affiliate links. And I've explained this before on the show, but if you click one of those links and make a purchase, you really are actually supporting the Mom Hour. We get a very small commission off of those links. We're not recommending these products in order to get the affiliate um, because these are everything we're going to talk about today, Katie, is stuff we've used with our own kids. Completely. But I, I did just want to let you know because it is a really nice way to support the mom hour um and so visiting the show notes and clicking through those links any purchase that you make helps us a little bit and so we really appreciate that um and there's a few there's several products in here that won't be affiliate links just because we're we're just talking about the stuff we really love um okay so we're gonna take turns katie why don't you go first katie's more organized and she's gonna go i think by age and mine are all over the place but everything we're talking about today is uh zero to five basically Okay, so I'll go ahead and start with my first category, which is newborn slash infant. And we kind of know moms, you know, zero to three months, the best gift we can give them are cuddles and milk pretty much. (laughs) But we get excited about toys. And so we start looking. So um, I would say that my first pick is the Baby Einstein Take Along Tuned musical toy. So this truly is, I mean, this spans from fresh out the gate, fresh out the womb. Two, I would say Annalie will still pick this toy up sometimes and dance with it. So it's just a little music player that has a very easily grasped uh, handle. Right. And I just love the portability of it and the durability of it. It has been thrown, kicked, shoved, and um, it's great. Awesome. Great, (laughs) great tip. Okay, so my first suggestion um, really spans, I think, the whole age range we're talking about. And that is I want to talk quickly about high quality wooden blocks. Um, It sounds maybe not very exciting, but I love the open ended play that happens with wooden blocks. And you guys can picture what I'm talking about, specifically the ones that have like different shape. Well, I'm actually going to talk about two different kinds. But right now I'm talking about the ones where there's like rectangle, square. There might be some like angled triangular ones and you can sort of fit them together. Ours are a kind of a light colored wood. Ours also came with, so ours are by Plan Toys. And I will, again, everything will be linked in the show notes. Um, We were gifted a 50 unit set that actually came with a shelving unit where everything can be put away, um, which is really cool. But what I want to tell you, if you have, if you have babies right now, what I want to tell you is your kids will continue to use blocks like these in different ways. And they interact with other toys. Like they will drive their little matchbox cars along them. They're, they'll use them to build a house for their calico critters. Like I love the way blocks sort of um, just translate into other toys and other imaginative play. And I, I do think sometimes when you give blocks, kids are like, great, I'm going to make a tower. Like how, you know, like, but I promise they they last the distance. And I have just found that higher quality wooden blocks will get more played. So ours are, they're a little bigger and a little heavier, just slightly than the cheaper models. So those are the ones I'm going to link to for you guys. And again, ours are planned toys. Um, The other wooden blocks I love and the same same tip um are you know the alphabet ones katie where it's like a letter and they're really pretty like those are the ones we have yeah so again i there's the one i picked out that i will link to is slightly pricier than melissa and doug and this is not knocking melissa and doug because i love their toys but there's Mm -hmm. a few cases in which theirs are smaller and lighter and the just slightly more substantial ones they hold up better in towers and they're beautiful so um gifting those ABC blocks, especially for a brand new baby, brand new parents, um, or just the sort of um, multi-use wooden blocks. Um, I guess my tip with blocks is go high quality, especially if you're planning on having multiple kids, they will get played with. So go high quality and be enthusiastic, apparently, because I was guilty of that too. Okay. So my next toy is another musical toy. And I remember distinctly talking with my mommy and me friends that I had just met as a new mom. And we were having a little toy conversation and one of the moms said, oh, have you guys heard about that kick piano player? 
And I had not heard of it, but it is a kick and play piano mat. I promptly researched it and I ended up getting this same piano mat for Luke and I found it actually at a garage sale. Oh, nice. So, so it, the baby lies on the mat and kicks and it makes sound? Is that what I'm Exactly. It, okay. it, it, the baby kick, kick, kicks. And, you know, I mean, that's one of the first kind of physical developmental yeah. things that babies do. And so for them to have that cause and effect when they kick the piano it right. obviously plays a key um but it's big and um if you're looking for a play mat which i feel like most babies have a play mat that is definitely a great option it's stimulating and fun to look at and also comes in gender neutral colors yes a plus for that katie and i both have a girl and then a boy so it's like if you get everything pink like I don't know. You got to deal with that shortly I, thereafter. I know. Um, okay. So my, this is, this is a fun one. Um, and I actually just found out about this company from my sister who you guys know just had her first baby. But did you know there is a Hairbow subscription club for little girls? Is this I on your radar? I did not know. Okay. So this company is called Little Poppy Co. Um, and my sister turned me on to them, but it's, I, this would totally be a gift for like a mom of a brand new baby girl where the Completely. baby wasn't going to care what they got, but the mom would love it so much. So it's like 11 bucks a month and they send you three hair bows and it can be like the newborn kind where it's just a very like thin nylon strap if they don't have hair. The or, nylon is great. Or the alligator clips if they have hair. Right. So you get to choose. And then, of course, because it's throughout the year, there's seasonal ones oh. like and they're super cute bows. Like I have bow envy a little bit because I feel like bows got so much cuter. After I, my, I didn't have babies anymore, like Violet was like right on the cusp, but they used to be like big and brighter and all of these kind of like natural look. I just love the bows right now. Yeah. So I would totally gift this to someone who just had a baby girl. And again, the, we're talking about babies who don't care about their gifts so much. But how fun would that be to get three bows a month in so the mail? Right. You fun. want it. Well, you you've got you a, you, oh, I want it. Yeah. And you've got a little niece. Sarah, I know. So. I do. So my sister told me about this and um. Yeah, so it's Little Poppy Co. is the name, and maybe the new moms out there all know this already, but I thought it was pretty fun. Um, and the bows are super, super cute. Um, and so I will, again, link that up, and it's just their their subscription club from Little Poppy Co. Awesome. Okay, next, I'm moving on from music, and I'm going to books. So these books, again, totally span the age range, starting from newborn to, I would say, uh, late toddler, okay, preschool age. Um, so I'm going to start with my favorite, favorite, favorite baby book series. It's called Baby Lit. Uh huh. And it's a whole collection. Have you heard of Baby Lit? Yes, okay. I have heard of them. So it's a whole book collection that has classic book titles in board book baby form. Mm -hmm. So I was reading one review and it was so funny because the person actually gave it a low review because they were like, what, what is this classic book? The story isn't told of the actual classic. Um, well, the person had to understand that they are primer books, which means the characters of the book are introduced and maybe at a very high level, the sequence of right. events or the kind of high level themes or whatever iconic images, stuff right. like that. Um, but they're, they're primers. So for example, one book like Alice in Wonderland will uh, be a colors primer. So it'll introduce your baby or toddler to colors. Okay. I actually didn't know when I first uh, caught onto this series that it was a primer. So okay. I, I too was confused. Yeah. I was like, why is the last page yellow teapot? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I know Lewis Carroll was a little wacky. Is this just a, an illustration of that? I, I couldn't quite understand why Queen of Hearts was not the last page. But then I found out, oh, it's because it's colors. So a few of my favorite titles are um, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn is so fun. It's like a nature and outdoor oh, primer. Fun. So cute. And then I happened to be um, scrolling through Amazon today and I saw that there's the Nutcracker, nice. which has they all have such beautiful, whimsical illustrations, and any book that has beautiful illustrations, I'm such yeah, a sucker for. Me too. Um, <clears throat> and then this other great one is called Pets Tales. This is more, doesn't so much span the ages, but Pets Tales, it's one of those crinkle oh, sound Oh, yes, books. the crinkle books are so good for babies. Okay, and they I never them. understood that as a new mom before I actually had my baby. I was like, this is the most obnoxious yes. sound. Like, I'm putting those in a box and never opening yeah, them. Yeah, they love them, though. And then, yeah, they love them. So um, what's so fun about not only does it crinkle, but it ha it goes through different animals like a horse, and it has different texture 
for the tail. Right. So the horse will be I've like fringe and yeah. then there's like a fish tail and it's shiny and yeah. kind of um, silky. Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really fun one. And then just, um, I mean, the whole black and white book thing for infants because high contrast, mm -hmm. black, white is how babies first right. visually develop. Um, and we had flashcards for okay. Anna Lee. And I just wish that I had known that there were actual black and white and red right. books, books that were actually bound. I just yeah. felt like I was flashcarding my infant yeah. and it felt wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, we went through the flashcards once. <laughs> like, what do, what, we, do, what do now? we do now? It wasn't yeah. a story. I, I, those black and white books are really cool. Again, I don't feel like there were as many of them a few years ago. Um, okay, so my next thing is actually a tip about books. And so I'll just piggyback on. I wasn't going to list specific titles, but here is a tip. Um, there are board books, uh, board book versions of what I would consider more preschool aged books. And I would continue to buy board books as long as you can, but you don't have to buy the baby board book. So you just talked about some like very simple yes. baby early toddler. I'm talking about um, books that have a story element. So like we have that classic little engine that could um, or the little blue engine um, that are longer. They have a story. They have several pages, but you can still buy the board book version. And the reason it's so great is often right as your preschoolers getting into these types of stories, there might be a younger sibling who comes along to rip up books. Yes. And I had a couple of book rippers in my family. And what I think happens sometimes is mom put the really nice books away because she doesn't want them to get ripped up. Mm -hmm. So look for board book versions of books that are not for babies. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and, and they're a little bit abridged. The sometimes books, they're right? abridged. It probably depends on which story they're telling. Okay. There's Dr. Seuss bo board yes. books. Like, yeah. And some of them might be slightly abridged, but um, we, we are still reading board books in my family. And it's not because it's because they're really, they are preschool level books. They're just issued in board book format and they just hold up great, especially with more babies that come along and rip up books. Yep. So that's just a tip. And slightly abridged sometimes is the preferred. Right. When exactly. you're, uh, There's nothing wrong with abridging. <laughs> ready to get to bed. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm moving into the next sort of age range, which is older baby, early toddlers. So any time from when your baby is starting to be mobile. So crawling, cruising, walking, that can be as early as six months, maybe even earlier in some cases for crawling at least. So I would recommend some type of activity center. I'm going to list three options, um, but they all kind of have overlapping concepts. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the activity center, the activity tables, which have different sensory and manipulative options on every side of the mm -hmm. four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had one. Uh, yeah. On yeah. every one of the four sides. Um, and that's just great. That has like a little piano, things you can yes. push, things you can pull. Ours and had then... one where the legs came off and so you could set it on the ground for like tummy time babies. Oh, that's cool. So it was a table, but if you took, snapped the legs off, it was Fisher Price. I can, I just hijacked your tip. Oh, but no. But I can link to that one totally too. Link that one. Because if you took the legs off and set it on the ground, then like a tummy time or, or army crawling kind of six month old yeah. can bop around on it if they can't pull up and stand. Oh, that's okay, awesome. Okay. So, um. Then they have a similar concept with the walker. So this one actually is a sit to stand walker. Mm -hmm. So they do um, actually the tablet is removable. It's it's basically a V shaped. It's almost like they're pushing a little um, trolley. Yeah, kind of an easy. Yeah, I know. I know which one you're talking about type of thing. And and there's a manipulative tablet um, full of the same type of activities, a little piano, things to push and pull, yeah. shapes to match. Yeah. That's also removable. Um, we'll talk about push pushing items later. This actually isn't my favorite pushing thing, but it is great for developing walkers. And then lastly, uh, an activity cube, which if you're into the wooden toy. Mm -hmm. I've seen those. Yeah. The, the activity cubes, which have um, the wooden blocks that you mm -hmm. turn with different themes. There can be animals or letters and objects. And on top, it has that sort of abacus bead yes, roller the bead coaster, maze. the bead maze. Megan and I had once had a like long conversation about what you call those things in yeah. another gift guide episode. Like, you know, the ball that rolls <laughs> right. along the wire thingy, it goes in yeah. circles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and I mean, with all, with specifically the wooden activity cube, the price range is so huge. I mean, mm. you can get kind of a, a low level $30 one that does the same job as a $250 one. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even believe that yeah. they came in that expensive, but 
but I don't know, maybe the $250 one is just durable out of this world or something, but we were, we were good with, with yeah. ours. Okay. Good to know. All right. Those are, that's a great tip. So, um, my next one departs a little bit from some of this, and that is to gift a zoo membership or children's museum membership or membership to one of those like indoor play places. If you live somewhere wintry or like I lived in Arizona, there's lots of like indoor bouncy house or play area. They all Mm -hmm. have either punch cards or memberships. Um, and again, when we're talking about little ones who maybe only need a couple things to open, but the parents really appreciate things like this. So totally. that is an amazing gift for new parents of babies or baby or parents of a couple of little kids. Um, and we benefited from gifts like that over time. And if you are the parent, something you could put on your wish list. So, um, and, and I find that zoos and children's museums, both of which tend to be nonprofit and set, they're set up very well for gifting memberships. Like it's really easy. You can go online get a gift membership, have it emailed or have something nice printed. So Mm -hmm. it's pretty easy. The indoor play place, that would be probably you'd more be purchasing like a 15 punch card or something. But still, I think that's a great gift idea. And you can be incentivized with it being more economical. Like it's cheaper to do a membership than a single day entrance. It it totally is. And it's it's something that you and your kids will use all year long. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Okay. So my next one is the something to push, just generically something to push anything from one of those ball popper pushers. Oh, yeah. Like the lawnmower the, type. Yeah. yeah. Like the lawnmower type. But I'm going to recommend specifically something that kids can fill because that's where it's yeah. really going to take your child into older age ranges mm-hmm. and still be so fun. Um, I literally bought a shopping cart at another garage sale for Anna Lee before she was even born. And Kyle looked at me like, great, another thing to put yeah. in our garage with the 5 million other yeah. baby gadgets. And we don't even have a newborn, much right. less a walker. But I was like, no, I promise. Yeah. This is just one of my motherhood dreams yeah. fulfilled, a shopping cart. So, I mean, the moment that she could walk, actually yeah. before she could yeah. even walk, when she was cruising, yeah. she was pushing this this uh, shopping cart around Filling it, unfilling yep. it, packing it, unpacking yep. it. Luke does the same yep. thing. They just run around making circles yep. at the bottom of our house. So I would highly recommend a shopping cart or a stroller. We have a little baby stroller outside for outside use. Yeah. And then the shopping cart is for inside yeah. use. Um, yep. So something to push. I agree. I agree. We never had a shopping cart. We had lawnmowers, really? baby strollers, a little push, like mini wagon, not the, not a big wagon. Um, and for some reason, we never had a shopping cart, but I agree. That's a great one. Did also, they fill the stroller with things other than babies? Probably. Okay. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> um, and we did have this wagon. Yes. And also, um, so sometimes those are looked at as like walking aids or, you know, some of them are like, wa- but they, kids will use them long after they're done. Oh, like completely. learning to walk. Yeah. yeah, yeah completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So I have my next two are both um, kind of cheap stocking stuffer type things. um, And I'll just do one now. So this um, would be more of, I would say, a preschool toy. And it's another thing for which I don't really have a name. Um, But that is there is a name because if you search Amazon for LED spin wand, you will find for like six to twelve dollars. Like it looks like it has one button and it has a little tiny globe on the end with lights inside. And if you push the button. The lights inside will spin. It's fun mm-hmm. to do in the dark, but they are battery operated, although ours just usually wear out by the time we would ever change a battery. And no joke, all you're doing is pushing one button and watching these lights spin around. But for some reason, I mean, my kids at their ages now would still play with one of these. And it's a globe. It's like a tiny little ball, like a tiny little um, clear transparent ball and then inside are a bunch of I guess they're LED lights I learned that by trying to find on Amazon what this thing was called but usually you'd see them in like the like the cheapo bins at like maybe in a Target dollar section almost like party favor style yes but they are I will say they're a little more substantial and a little nicer than true plastic crap you know how I feel about like goodie bag crap (laughs) this is like a step up they're like maybe eight bucks but for some reason and I'm gonna say like as soon as they could push the button, so probably age three, because it might require a little bit of coordination to actually push the button. But there's only one button; it can't really break. Yeah, it might. The light bulbs might wear out, or if you smashed it, but it can't really break. There's no batteries to replace. It does not make noise. Oh, I mean, that it, is might, a plus. it makes like a little buzz, like a little whir, like you know, a handheld fan. It would be yes. like the same type of thing as a handheld fan, but instead of yeah. a fan, it's this little spinning light up thing. And I swear, kids love it. And yeah. so like great stocking stuffer works for, I'm going to say ages three through adult. 
Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, and so I will link to a couple, but a whole bunch came up under, and I saw some cute Christmas themed ones too. Okay. So just uh, search LED spin wand is the closest I came to an actual label for I this love device. That. I, I love that. I also always bring these to siblings of brand new babies. It's like oh, a great a thing great to be idea. like, here's a random toy for you. It won't annoy your parents. It cost me $6 and it'll keep you busy for like, I think you play with it in the car. Like, yeah. yeah. And it doesn't make a mess either. No, no, no mess. noise. No, no mess. Yeah. Endless hours of play. I love it. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> My next one is another sort of movement oriented gift and that is something to ride. So when Annalie turned one, we were gifted a grow with you bike. And actually I think the formal name is stroll to trike. It was made by radio flyer and it's one of those awesome, well, like the title grow with you bike. So when you are not necessarily walking, um, yet you can be pushed in it. Right. So there's, there's yep. a, uh, an adjustable push handle for, for the parents. parents. Yeah. And then once the child has enough coordination and that literally lasts for probably about 18 months until the child can actually pedal themselves. Yeah, it takes a while. So, um, then once they can pedal themselves, that adjustable handle push thing is just removable. You take that out and then it becomes a tricycle. So we love that one. I mean, we take it to the park. Annalie um, now knows how to pedal it herself. And um, she likes pushing Luke in it. She likes pushing babies yeah. in it. I mean, another another yes. obsession with just pushing yeah. things and watching them go. Nice. Um, so I'm going to piggyback on... No, I'm going to do my other stocking stuffer first. I lied. Um, so my other cheap stocking stuffer, and these are relatively recent, but have you seen these water wow things no. you know what i'm talking about okay no. so water wow it's like a little activity uh picture like a very small coloring book but okay. instead of using any crayons um it has a little wand that you fill with a little bit of water and it comes out through a brush so but there's no water that gets spilled because it yes. comes out really um slowly okay and i've heard kids, of this concept the kids are quote unquote painting each page in this cardboard flip book mm-hmm. basically and as they paint Colors are revealed. Yes. So they are not using color. Yes. They are not using water. They are using this little brush thing. And the colors um, reveal themselves as they as they paint. So it's magical. But then it dries and you can start all over again. You use it really? over it's and reusable? over and over that again. Is re- that is right? magical. So each one only has maybe eight pages. Um, but in a few minutes, the color goes away and they can do it all over again. It's another one that no joke ages 18 months. If you're old enough to hold any kind of an implement, 18 months through my big kids would still do these. They will wear out over time. Like, you know, if painting the pages over and over again. And if you spill water or it gets too wet, then they don't work as well. But I, yeah. no joke for car trips, airplane trips. Oh, yeah. I was going to say for um, travel, they're yeah. great. And I think Melissa and Doug, if they don't have a monopoly on them, they have the the widest variety. So the the brand name is Water Wow, but they are put out by Melissa and Doug. You okay. can see them in bookstores. They're on Amazon. And Amazon has a lot of three packs of them. Okay. So we like zoo animals, sea animals, blah, blah, blah. But seriously, I only started seeing them like a year and a half ago. And they're amazing. I and love they're, that they're tiny too. Yes. Yeah, so they're like, I'm, I'm holding, there may be like, Five inches by eight inches. Okay. Like smaller than a um, smaller than a coloring book. Yeah. Okay. And a little thicker because the pages are like cardboard. So awesome. Yeah. I'm going to have to look into those for sure. Okay. So um, I'm going to move on to another new, well, not a new age category, but another new sort of category of toy. And that is their size, little kid size, little toddler size furniture. Yeah. Good one. So we actually inherited from my cousin this adorable colonial style kid rocker oh that is cute so it has little white spindles Uh and it is just the most adorable little rocker ever and the moment that Annalie could start climbing up into chairs Mm -hmm. just the level of ownership you could just feel Mm -hmm. the level of ownership that she or any little person Mm -hmm. was taking when they understood that that is a chair Mm -hmm. specifically for me and my size people Mm -hmm. and um she immediately started bringing books to mm-hmm. it and climbing up in it. Luke has other ideas of what to use this tr- chair for. He likes the rocking mechanism. So he stand up rocker. Stand up yeah. rocker. <laughs> exactly. So um for for Luke variety of people, I would recommend a different, more stable type mm-hmm. of chair. I would recommend the 
anywhere chairs that you see at Pottery Barn. Yeah. So it's kind of like those arm chairs yeah. that are the foam. Yep, that's what we have one of those. Okay. Yeah. And I have been eyeing those since Anna Lee was a baby. I have not taken the plunge yet um, because we have like, you know, that little colonial chair. And she has this other little wooden throne is what right. I call it chair um, up in her bedroom. Target has an almost identical version of the Pottery Barn chair. It's cheaper. It's called the Luna Lounger chair. Okay. And that is adorable. And I just love that you can monogram and customize for the children. They're just so cute. Can I, just, can I tell you a sad story? I had to, I got rid of my older two kids' personalized chairs recently because they, they are too big to sit in them. Oh. Theirs were not the Pottery Barn ones. They were a little bit smaller, but they had these little ottomans. So they were like <laughs> rockers with yeah. ottomans. Like, yeah. Or like, you know, um, upholstered rockers with yes. ottomans. Yes. Um, and I had to get the okay of the kids because I knew they would notice. They were in the garage. We used to sometimes drag them out for like a movie night in the garage or something. But yeah. like their little bottoms barely even fit in them anymore. And they yeah. were kind of gross looking. So I paid them each $5. I was <laughs> like, I don't always pay you to give away your stuff. But I think we all need to acknowledge it's time to move on. Yes. And I will pay you $5 if you're willing to <laughs> <laughs> let me goodwill these chairs. Violet still has hers. That. But yeah, I, I totally hilarious. agree. Kid size furniture. Um, and you can do the, the higher end stuff. Or the cheaper stuff, it will all get used, and it'll yeah. get used so many ways. We still have most of our kids' size furniture still in operation. I I did get rid of those too, but yeah, our small table and chairs, yeah, right. they will use it. I know space is an issue. It's like where do you put right. these mini size right. furniture items that are blocking up my real size right. furniture? I know we're sitting in my son's room right now, and actually, there's a little drawing table that is now his nightstand. But this oh. little table has a chair that goes with it, which we still have, I think, in the garage. Um, and it was like a little desk, like Perfect. a little kid-sized desk is now a big kid nightstand. Perfect. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about a scooter real quick. I know you just talked about something to ride. Yes. And I'm a big fan of that. And this is a brand actually Megan and I have talked about before. And the brand is Micro Kickboard. They make amazing quality scooters. They are more expensive. And this is one where I will just say it's been worth it for me. Um, but they have the one I'm going to talk about is called the Micro Mini 3-in-1. And similar to your trike, it transitions from, um, I would say, age one to like five because you swap out the handle that you hold on to. Okay. Um, and it's a three wheel scooter. So they don't have to be able to balance like the razor oh, scooter, okay. but these scooters move so naturally that literally like an 18 month old can ride the scooter. And for they actually, there's a little seat that detaches. We didn't use this seat so much because my 18 month old wanted to go right to the big kid phase, but there are actually three ways to use it. They can sit and qu sort of like push themselves. Yeah. And then the first handle is shorter and it has a circular handle. So they're kind of holding on almost like a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. And then the longer handle is both as they grow and it's the shape of the handle is different. So um, it's $119, which is more than some scooters, but it, could literally last your kid from ages one to five and then get passed down because these are amazing scooters. That's, so that's awesome. My... So did you get it with Allegra and then pass no, it down? No, it, because I, this didn't come on my radar till Violet, but she oh, got okay. it when she was one oh, and okay. she used it. And then we actually ended up getting a diff, another micro kickboard scooter that is a bigger size. But yeah, yeah, you could, it would, it would take you from, I think ages one to four or five. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, speaking of recommended ages, Sarah, what's your philosophy um, on recommended ages of toys because yeah, as hard. as we learn yeah. with each next kid yeah. it's like the age range becomes sooner and earlier right. and you understand that wow kids can still use those things maybe for not the intended purpose right well yeah and not only that but there's all the legal reasons why like right. have you notice that's that, like, what I nothing is recommended for age under three like pretty much there's like there's like infant approved infant toys right. and then everything else is three and up yes because toddlers are a hot mess and they will find a way to be dangerous with right. everything right um but yeah i think i i guess i still look at that recommendation but like i, I always think, size up is yes and i think yeah exactly and when you're putting things like let's say you, the grandparents want to know what to get your kids and you're listening to this podcast and you're going to send them a list or whatever you have to be thinking six to 12 months oh, totally. down the line yes. because your kids change and grow so fast. Yes. So yeah, absolutely. And there have been times where we've received games, especially board games. I do feel like is one where, um, if you go too far ahead, you might have to wait a year and right. not get as much enjoyment out of that. But yeah, right. I think always be looking ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm moving on to my next age category, which is full fledged toddler slash preschool age. So I'm going to go ahead and start with books in this category. So one of the sort of enduring titles that Annalie has liked since she was able to pick out books herself, and I think it's because of the beautiful illustrations, is Fancy Nancy. I love Fancy Nancy. And I have to say that I'm 
the one who obviously made sure that her library was stocked with a couple of fancy Nancy titles, because even before I had children, when I first started teaching, I was in early childhood mm-hmm. education for a little while. And I, I just saw Fancy Nancy. I discovered mm-hmm. it early. And I was just so smitten. I yeah. was like, oh, I cannot wait to have yeah. children it's, to I, read these I, two. Yeah, they're great. And from a narrative perspective, if you're familiar with Pinkalicious, both Sarah and I agree that we like Fancy Nancy narratives and, yeah. and the stories and just how the characters... Yeah, and the writing. Oh, yeah. the writing, yeah. yeah. And how Nancy interacts. And and the whole sort of concept of, of fancifying everything yeah. comes out in her language. Right, yeah. So the vocab is really great. And, so yeah. great. And and it's just, oh, so great. Yeah. So Fancy Nancy. And then my next series that I'll talk about is um, a series that, I, that recently came into my radar probably last spring. So it's called Little People, Big Dreams. Okay. Series, have you heard of this? No. Okay. So... Um, this series pulls out famous historical female figures. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any male figures, but I'm drawn it ev- drawn to it even more because they're female figures. Um, so the first title that I bought was Coco Chanel, just because it was so pretty mm-hmm. and pink and black, and the illustrations again amazing. Um, but I just recently picked up Amelia Earhart from the library and other figures. If you're interested, are Frida. Kahlo, Marie Curie, Rosa Parks. Nice. Um, Rosa Parks, I just happened to be flipping through it at Barnes & Noble, and I would say that would be more Violet's reading level because okay. lots of, I mean, it was just longer okay. on each page. Okay. Coco Chanel, I feel like, is a good level where Anna Lee is. Um, she's almost three, so okay. just as a little benchmark. Nice. Yep, so two favorite toddler series. Okay, nice. Um, all right, so my next one is um, for, uh, first board game. So if you have a kid who's three or already three, about to be three, or three turning four, I think gifting a uh, like early board game can be fun. Uh, Megan and I did a whole episode once on board games, and it is not always pleasant to play board <laughs> games with three and four year olds, but it's something. I mean, you got to start your family's board game library at some point. Yeah. So my first favorites are Hi Ho Cherio, Candyland, and Zingo. Okay. Um, so I'll link those up. Okay. Awesome. Um, my next one is a play kitchen or a workbench to keep it gender yep. uh, friendly. Um, so anything that has doors or gadgets that can be opened or manipulated. Luke loves playing with our play kitchen. I happen to have, well, I, I say it like I play with it. Um, Anna Lee has the Pottery Barn play kitchen. Mm-hmm. And I got that at a garage sale for twenty five dollars. Nice. It was in pristine condition, and it was like the the skies parted, and just another it was meant for mu- you. It was meant for me. Nice, yeah. So just because it um, fosters the whole uh, creative play yep. and imaginative, imaginative to play and all of that. So we're a big fan. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Play Kitchens too. We still have ours in use. And actually that is one where I did go cheap. It's relatively cheap. It's a step two, which that's a brand that's at Walmart and Target. And they're they're it's fine. It's plastic. It's It's not durable still though. But it is still in operation. They're never as pretty, I will say, the cheaper ones as the high end ones. So sometimes it's our adult like decorating sensibility that makes those nice ones. But but our cheap one is still totally in use. Does the job. Okay, so I think we're wrapping up soon. Yes. My One of my last ones is um, something for indoor play. And so they make really fairly inexpensive tents and teepees and crawl through tunnels and any of that. So if you have a winter coming up or an Arizona summer coming up, um, most of these can be folded and put it away. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have something like that, that's a fun. And it also that has a, a nice... Um, what am I trying to say? Like the the Christmas morning effect because it can be oh, set up and it seems yeah. like a really big deal. It oh, maybe totally. Costs yes. you twenty nine dollars and it's made of nylon. Yes. But if it's a tent or a crawl through tunnel or a teepee or something, it's big. Very impressive. Um, and so it, yeah, it has that effect as well. I second that. Okay. Well, my last one actually, I cannot take credit for. Uh, my husband came up with this idea himself, and he came up with this after Luke was born. We have this discount tool slash hardware store called Harbor Freight okay. in our area. Are you, you're no. not familiar with it? Okay. So, I mean, there's a running theme with my stuff. Discounted garage yeah. sailing. <laughs> okay. So um, the Harbor Freight store sends out brochures and flyers, and often it will have a free tool with purchase, or actually, I don't even know if you have to purchase anything, okay. honestly. So Kyle is in this sort of accumulation of tools phase okay. of life. And so he went in maybe a year ago around um, 
Black Friday and began picking up over the course of months a couple tools for Luke. And it's he's basically trying to accumulate a toolbox for him when he first goes off. And we can do the same thing for Annalie. That's really cute. Yeah. So, so accumulate these are these adult toys. tools. They're adult tools. Okay. Yeah. So, so he's so building his I like that. his toolbox collection. And so when he flies the coop, we can present to him this toolbox. But I like the fact that it was started when he was a baby. I love that. And anything that can be added to, and even relatives could contribute. Yeah. Like, yeah, that can be added to over time. Right. Like a, like a collection. That's a really good idea. Yeah, so switching from the freebies to yeah. maybe the nicer. Yeah. Yeah, so Way building go, his collection. Kyle. I know. Um. Well, I just, I, my, I don't, this is not a product, but just one final thought. If you are a new family, babies and little kids are buying for a family like that. Um, I think the theme today has been it's not always about the kids because the kids oh, will totally. have the they will have the stamina to open like one or two gifts, even if they're two and three years old. I mean, it takes a while to like really get into I want all these presents. So right. given that, I think you can take advantage of those first few years and really start to think about like what kind of furniture, toys, long term toys yes. do I want in my house? And you get because I promise you when your kids are almost five, seven and nine, like they are going to have real specific gift lists. But for right. now, I think as a mom, you get to kind of decide. And some of those things like the Children's Museum membership or um, things like that are really more for you and your family. And I think that's totally OK. Oh, absolutely. The, the, babies, the babies don't care. I agree. Okay. Well, we went a tiny bit long, but I think we kept it pretty focused. I think so. So you guys go check the show notes at themomhour.com. This was our Cyber Monday special number one, we'll call it. I just decided that's what we'll call it. And then there will be two more in your feed today. So go listen to those with Megan and me as you do your shopping. And we'll talk about bigger kid and tween and teen and adult gifts. And Katie, this was fun. So fun. Don't all stress right. about cleaning up after all those toys. No, no, no. Just acquire <laughs> no it all. Yeah. All right. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code themomhour20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code THEMOMHOUR at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.